Well, Bertha Palmer uh, is, is really the base persona in Sarasota history. Um, most of what we see today flows from actions that she took uh, in the relatively brief period of time that she was in Sarasota between 1910 and 1918. She was born in 1849 in Louisville. Uh, her father brought the family to Chicago uh, just before the Civil War. He made a, made a lot of money in real estate. So his daughters, particularly, were well-educated, uh, particularly for women in that age. And one of, the, one of the individuals that he did business with in Chicago was a fellow named Potter Palmer, who, among other things, built the Palmer House in Chicago, which a lot of people, it's still there, so a lot of people may know about it. But it was the finest hotel in Chicago. And Palmer built it in order to promote his real estate developments uh, along State Street in, in Chicago. That relationship uh, caused him, allowed him to meet Bertha Honoré when she was 13 years old uh, at her father's house. And apparently he was smitten. He had to wait uh, until she was 22, uh, but then he promptly married her. There was quite a difference in age between the two. Uh, that's partly why she was a relatively young widow uh, uh, with a lot of money. Uh, Potter didn't have any family, so that when he died, it, it all went to, to Bertha. Now, Bertha became the social leader of Chicago at a time of huge population growth, the growth of a prosperous middle class, a lot of new rich individuals, mostly young, uh, it was an extraordinarily dynamic city, and this emerging leadership group uh, in the city was particularly dynamic. She rose to the top of the social heap, in essence, and she controlled it all the way to the date of her death for decades. And she did it by the simple device of, first of all, just being enormously famous, and then secondly, uh, she... Uh, she determined who was on the social list, the acceptable social list of Chicago. She was the Mrs. Astor. Bertha Palmer played exactly the same role in Chicago. And the test of the whole thing was, were you invited to Bertha Palmer social events? Uh, and, it, and the newspapers printed those, so, those invitation lists. So it was very clear who was acceptable and accepted into the upper reaches of Chicago society, and those pretenders who were consigned to social oblivion. And she played that role very well. But it was only the beginning of what made her significant. Well-educated, beautiful, bright. She was a devoted mother of two sons. Her older son was Honoré Palmer, and the younger son was Potter Palmer, Jr named after the father. But where she really made her name and became a global figure uh, was with her work at the Chicago World's Fair of 1893, the great white city. At that World's Fair, which was held in Jackson Park in Chicago, she rose to be the president of the women's division of the World's Fair. It's the first time Congress had ever recognized women in this particular way and she was the first woman to, uh, to head an, uh, an organization of that sort that had government blessing. Mrs. Palmer became an international figure uh, in 1893 at the Chicago World's Fair, where she headed the women's division, which meant that it was her responsibility and the responsibility of the women's committee that she headed uh, to bring in all of the works of women throughout the world. And that allowed her to travel widely in Europe. And she corresponded with uh, the Empress of Japan, who she could not visit with directly, and convinced her to put a World's Fair Women's Committee uh, together. And actually, the Japanese were quite well represented in Chicago. She was the chief hostess of the World's Fair. The World's Fair brought presidents and kings and nobility from all over the world. And they all ended up at Mrs. Palmer's 
home. They were called the Castle on North Michigan Avenue in, in Chicago. She was hostess to the world. All of this meant that when the World's Fair ended, she was probably the best known American woman in the world. By the time she comes down to Sarasota, uh, which was at age 61, she was so well known that everything she did was covered in not only all the Chicago newspapers, but in newspapers in different parts of the world, particularly London and Paris, where she had homes, uh, but also in New York, uh, New York City, New York Times and other papers covered her. So that when she came down here in 1910, attracted by an advertisement for citrus lands in this area, by the time she came down here, the people down here knew a great deal about her because she was so famous. I've often pointed out to people it was somewhat similar when she stepped off her Pullman car at the train station in Sarasota in 1910. It was akin to E.T. landing. I mean, she was an otherworldly figure to these folks down here. Remember, there were only 900 people in the city of Sarasota, or town of Sarasota, and only less than 2,000 in all of what we think of as, as Sarasota County. Bertha Palmer came down here because uh, she was freezing in Chicago in January of, of 1910, and she read an ad in the Chicago Tribune that had been placed by a fellow named Joseph Lord, who had bought up some 50,000 acres of land here in the Sarasota area. And Lord was trying to make a profit by selling it to Northerners. And so uh, he had actually established an office in the Marquette Building in the Loop in Chicago, put these ads in the paper, and Mrs. Palmer happened to read it. One thing led to another, and two weeks later, uh, she uh, descended a, 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 from a Pullman car into Sarasota which was not much to look at, in which the streets were dirt streets. There was some, apparently some sewage that flowed through the place. It, it was in the midst of a economic depression. And she got off, looked around and said, it's, it's coined, it's coined. And so they all fell in love with her <laughs> for, for that. <laughs> but, uh, but she quickly uh, came down. What she was looking for was to build a winter home uh, which she did. She set up a 350-acre estate uh, in Osprey, which, the remains of which today people can visit as uh, historic Spanish Point. But there's only 30 acres uh, in, in, that's left. Originally, it was much, much bigger. She made the decision at some point that it wasn't just a winter home that she was looking for here. She wanted to go into business. She had the money. She'd inherited at least $6 million from, from her husband. She had the money to do it. Uh, and very quickly, she purchased 140,000 acres. Some of that was in Tampa and uh, elsewhere in Florida, but the great bulk of it was to the, mostly to the east, southeast, and south of the town of Sarasota. We are sitting on Palmer land right now. Indeed, right across uh, uh, the creek here stood the home of Honoré Palmer for years. He married a, a woman from Baltimore. He became very friendly with her husband in Chicago. He persuaded them to come down here, and that's where this house comes from, and this estate. Because Mrs. Palmer always aimed to bring the rich, particularly from Chicago, to Sarasota to buy her land. Well, Mrs. Palmer was uh, the person that, uh, that set up what has come to be called the Chicago Connection. And a great many Chicagoans, rich and not so rich, came down in part because the famous Mrs. Bertha Palmer was here and that you, the, the land people would advertise, you can come and live in the same community with the famous Bertha Palmer. Uh, but the Chicago Connection uh, some of it was a family connection. Uh, there were family connections with the Palmers, and, and that would cause people to come down. Her aunt and uncle came down, built a mansion here. Uh, but a lot of it uh, were, were businessmen and, and people like Owen Burns, uh, who became a very, very famous figure in early 
uh, Sarasota uh, history. Owen Burns uh, was one of those people from Chicago that came down in part because Mrs. Palmer blazed the trail to Sarasota and uh, Chicagoans paid note to that. Burns came in and immediately became one of the most productive citizens in the town, later city of Sarasota. Uh, he had some money, he bought a lot of land from the uh, increasingly defunct uh, Florida Land and Mortgage Company, which was the company that had sponsored the Scots settlement in, uh, in 1885. Um, but the, even though that uh, Scots settlement failed, the company still owned all this land and Burns uh, was able to buy a lot of it, he began to turn it over. I mean, land was the thing to make money with in a frontier community like this. He was turning it over. He was, uh, he was advertising and turning it over, and it was in kind of in what we would think of as the city limits of Sarasota. So Burns Square and things of that sort. But he was, he was, he was a lot of things. He was a builder. I mean, he, he oversaw the building of, uh, of uh, John Ringling's great uh, estate. He built the El Vernona Hotel, uh, which uh, was the plushest hotel in Sarasota, quite famous, named for his wife. He lost it in the, what was the end of the great Florida land boom in the middle and late 1920s. And uh, John Ringling, who was his business partner, bought it for the taxes, the unpaid taxes, I think. And it became the Ringling Hotel, which was a, a very well-known structure. And its destruction uh, some time ago caused the birth of, a, of an architectural preservation community here in Sarasota. It was such a loss. Uh, and it should, and, and I think many of those people still feel it. It was a totally unnecessary loss. Bertha Palmer's vision when she came down was unformed. She, she was thinking mainly of, uh, of a winter home, a way, you know, that she could get out of Chicago and be warm in the, in the worst parts of the winter. Then when she got into land uh, and selling land, her vision was kind of to make this a rich man's paradise, as she said, and which uh, rich men would come down, buy land from her, build great estates, It'd be centered on her and her personality, her wealth, and her international fame. That didn't entirely succeed because, uh, you know, there were only so many rich people <laughs> that were going to come down here. And she had bought this 140,000 acres. Unfortunately for her, much of that 140,000 acres could not be farmed. Uh, it was underwater, in fact, some are part of the year. 75% of Sarasota, uh, what is Sarasota County today, was, it was in this condition. In fact, the only high points were in this area, right along the Sarasota Bayfront, and anywhere where you have a road that has ridge in it. And those ridges refer to the fact, Bee Ridge, for example, that refers to the fact that at some point an ancient sea lapped up to that point and, and left deposits of sand and caused it to be somewhat higher. And therefore, people could live on that and they could farm it. Uh, but other than that, uh, the most you could hope to do was run cattle part of the year. And the idea that she was going to bring in a bunch of northerners who knew nothing about any of this, had no particular skills, uh, but might like to live in Florida in the warm weather, made it clear that she had to do something to make that land livable and attractive. And her vision became very sophisticated and very comprehensive. Now she knew she was, I mean, the first thing she had to do was remake the land. How do you do that? Well, basically, you've got to drain it. Uh, and so thousand, she, uh, she uh, arranged for 50 to 100 miles of canals to be dug, which drained these swamps into Sarasota Bay. She, had, uh, she dug artesian wells. Seems strange. She got rid of the water that was sitting there <laughs> and then immediately had to do something about bringing water up why? Well, the reason is, is that we have a wet season and a dry season uh, in Sarasota. And in the dry season, you couldn't grow crops because, uh, because it, was, it was too dry. 
unless you could bring the water up out of the ground and funnel it into that system of, of canals. Uh, and that would allow the, far the farmers to raise not one crop a year, as in the north, but two crops a year. So why is Bertha Palmer important to the history of Sarasota? She came here, she bought land, she brought her rich friends down here to create the basis of a, a, a thriving cultural center. She understood that there needed to be a solid agricultural economy to, to base economic progress on. And it wasn't enough to uh, rely on tourists to come down or rich guys fishing in, in Sarasota Bay. You needed uh, year-round economic activity. And that had to be agriculture, including raising uh, uh, cattle and, and hogs. This is a social debutante, debutante we're talking about. I mean, this is, this is somebody that ran grand balls in Chicago. And suddenly, she is faced with the challenge <laughs> creating an empire of cattle and hogs. And she threw herself into it. Very bright lady. Uh, she used the new extension services that were just coming into, uh, uh, into existence. Uh, she used the United States Department of Agriculture uh, uh, experimental farm materials. She communicated with people all over the United States about particular subjects she was interested in. And the result was uh, she was the first to bring science to cattle raising and hog raising, and for that matter, the growing of, of other crops in the entire Sarasota area. She didn't invent this stuff, but she was the first one to study it and, and make it and, and show with the success of what she was doing that it would work. And it also was a way to attract people to buy her lands and move here. In addition, of course, she understood that you needed a community backbone that the people she was trying to entice down here were northerners, they were mostly urbanites. They weren't gonna live, wanna live on, on separated, isolated farms as in the north. She knew she had to create a web of roads. She knew she had to create whole towns. She had to build churches. Uh, she built hotels. And she also uh, used her economic strength to force railroads to build, build new rail connections here in Sarasota County that were, she felt were essential to bringing possible investors here and taking up north all of the products that were, were being grown and would be grown uh, because of this increase in population.